We're going to talk about tongue trust today. There's uh, There's been much published on this topic and yet there's still a lot of misconception about tongue trust. Um, in the 1950s and 60s, there was a lot of uh, a lot of talk about um, you know tongue trust, and and then much of the publication after that covered the topic. Yet still today, there's a lot of people um, believe that tongue trust will cause an open bite, and there's been a lot of uh, misconceptions about it. So I thought it would be a good idea to kind of to to cover um, the the subject. Um, a lot of times when you see a uh, um, a patient with an open bite, a lot of doctors think that the open bite was caused by the tongue trust, but actually that's not, not the case and there's been a lot of publication about uh, the, the topic, so uh, you can read about it in a Prophet and Fields book. Um, and um, we know for a fact from laboratory studies that uh, tongue trust can't really cause open bite because uh, when you have this what's called a tongue trust swallow, the, the tongue um, pushes against the anterior teeth and a lot of doctors will believe that that causes the open bite. But actually uh, from laboratory studies we know that during the day about 800 times a patient swallow and at, at night only maybe about 200 times. So you only have about a thousand uh, uh, swallows a day that people have and whenever you swallow you only push against the teeth about a second what the, what the, what the journals will show so really you have about a thousand seconds a day of the tongue trust swallow pushing against the anterior teeth now if you divide it up by 60 you know it's only a, a few minutes so you can imagine let's see if you had if you put like a clear line or trays on your teeth and you only wore it for a thousand seconds uh, uh, a day you would essentially get no tooth movement at all. So, so from that we know that since the tongue trust swallow only pushes against the teeth for about a thousand seconds a day, um, it cannot move teeth, and that's really is the fact. So, tongue trust will not cause an open bite, um, and that's been well established by lots of journals and, and textbooks, and it's been written about it many, many different places. Um, <clears throat> and also the other, other misconception is that when patients have this tantra swallow, um, they have a stronger force against the teeth. But actually, they actually measure this in, in, uh, in uh, laboratories, and actually that's not the case either. Uh, when patients have this tantra swallow, the force against the anterior teeth are not greater than patients who have a swallow with the, with the tongue against the roof of the mouth. So it's been well established that you know we, tongue trust will not cause an open bite. So why do we why do we see an open bite and a tongue between the teeth? Well, that's a whole different scenario. Well, you can have, for example, if a child had like a finger habit, like they have thumb sucking, and that created an open bite because the thumb is between the teeth a lot of the times, maybe half the night or during the day. Now that will create an open bite because it's a constant force between the teeth. And now the, now the patient has this open bite and um, they can't eat or drink because food will spill between the teeth. So what they do is they put their tongue between their, their teeth um, just to create a seal. And uh, so they kind of have this uh, tongue trust swallow, we call it, but that's, that's not the cause of the open bite. Um, it's really just an adaptation to it. So don't, don't get confused between you know, what caused the open bite there. Now, you see um, also these tantra swallows in adult patients, and I'm going to show you an example here, um, where, um, um, uh, you know, patients will have their tongue between their teeth when they swallow, and uh, you'd say, well, okay, so in that case, it caused an open bite. But actually, in a lot of those cases, um, what's happening is, patients had very for various reasons and usually it's like a large tonsils or airway issues they adopted this um, open mouth positions where they became mouth breathers so the the tongue dropped from against you know when you when normally you want your tongue against the roof of your mouth and uh, when you swallow and that maintains the upper arch um, now these patients with for example airway problems like let's say for example they have a large tonsil or um, you, you know that's the most common uh, issue um, what happens they adapt this they become these habitual mouth breeders and the tongue drops from the roof of the mouth 
to a lower position and a lot of times low and front because the patients are trying to breathe so they they have this new tongue position which is down and forward so now their uh, now their tongue is not supporting the upper arch so now the upper arch slowly starting to narrow and now they these patients have even less room to put their tongue between uh, their teeth and keep it up high on the palate uh, so their the upper arch starts getting narrow they starting to get more of an open bite and a longer face because the tongue is down and forward and now they <clears throat> their tongue is um, always between their teeth so they have this resting down and forward tongue position so now that will create an open bite because uh, uh, the constant force of the tongue uh, between the teeth will constantly push on those teeth because it's between the teeth at rest uh, and that will create an open bite. And you notice, for example, you get patients who, let's say, they had a stroke and their tongue is, they can't move their tongue or they lost control and the tongue is drifted to one side. A lot of times you see on those patients that the teeth completely pushed over or they have a big posterior open bite because their tongue is always between their teeth because they lost control over their tongue because of a stroke, for example. So these patients with, for example, tonsil issues, and they used to, we used to call this adenoid face, and you can read about this again in, in, a, in a Profit and Fields book, uh, where they have this long, longer face, and they have a, a, a down and forward tongue position. Um, a lot of these patients will get an open bite and when they swallow, they, they swallow with their tongue between their teeth. And they do that be because otherwise they will have food spill, um, spill out from their mouth. So it's, um, um, I think it's very important to kind of understand this. So, so again, just try to remember that the tongue trust does not cause the open bite. It's more of a, a seal. Um, in response to an open bite so when you see an open bite you gotta try to get to a bottom of it to see what could be causing it you know in children it could be you know finger habits or thumb sucking um, you know in adults and well as well as in teenagers and children too um, a lot of times it's a sign of uh, let's see in large tonsils that a patient just can't breathe and then a lot of these children you will see a, a tongue um, position that is down and forward and it's between the teeth all the time, pushing, you know, creating a constant force on the teeth, and that will create an open bite. And um, and you know, a lot of these patients will have this habitual swallow where they put the tip of the tongue between between the uh, between the anterior teeth. And I can show you an example here. So here is a great example. This is an adult patient with a, who had a large open bite, and um, it's a classic example for this. She had um, airway problems and uh, large tonsils for years and years that was not addressed. She had a tongue position that's constantly down and forward between uh, the anterior teeth. So she got this open bite. And when she swallows, she swallows with the teeth between, between the tongue between the anterior teeth. So you can see as she swallows, she puts her tongue there to create a seal. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a very hard habit to break, you know, in, 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 in normal, Normal positions, your tongue should be against the roof of the mouth, okay, with teeth are touching or near contact, uh, and the lip sealed. And that will create uh, a well-maintained arch in most of the cases because the tongue against the roof of the mouth is going to hold the upper arch in balance against the, the forces of the cheek muscle. If you lose the balancing force of the tongue, on against the palate and the upper maxillary teeth the 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 cheek muscles the muscles of uh, mastication it's just going to push that upper arch together and you you're going to end up with a narrow arch and because of the narrowing of the arch and the down and forward position of the tongue you're also going to have the elongation of the face and a lot of times an open bite so i hope that answered um, uh, the question about the tongue trust and and um, the tongue thrust uh, swallow and if you have any questions um, don't hesitate to let us know make sure to subscribe to this channel so you catch the new videos as they come out and uh, i try to cover topics that i get a lot of questions for and um, we have our monthly webinars uh, usually the second saturday of uh, uh, of each month at uh, nine o'clock in eastern standard time so if you have any questions please uh, shoot us an email and uh, um, have a good rest of the week Bye.